Okay, hear me out. As much as this video is going to be full of footage and images of spiders, it's actually a video that should give all arachnophobes hope. Why? Well, because this video is basically a montage of creepy crawlies that you'll almost definitely never bump into. Because these are the 20 rarest spiders in the world. Number 20. Deserta Grande Wolf Spider. The Deserta Grande Wolf Spider, also known as the Honga Ingas, is a critically endangered spider found only in a secluded valley on Deserta Grande Island, part of the Madeira Archipelago. Experts think there are now fewer than 5,000 adult spiders out there. This fact means it's one of the scarcest wolf spider species. This spider is notable for its size, with females boasting leg spans of up to 4.7 inches and males having slightly shorter legs. The species name Ingens is Latin for huge. It has a gray and black body with white spotted legs, and the spider typically dwells under rocks and in the crevices on this rocky island. However, its habitat is being compromised. The grass Phalaris aquatica is encroaching on its living space, and this makes life tough for these critters. Also, the presence of goats and rabbits has negatively impacted native vegetation. This spider's diet consists of millipedes, various insects, and even small snakes. Though it can deliver a painful, venomous bite to humans, it generally just keeps to itself. Oh yeah, if you don't want a giant spider bursting out of your toilet bowl, you better hit the like and subscribe button, like, quick. Now it's time for the strange topic. Well, if this photo doesn't give you a panic attack, then you are truly made of steel. The good news is, it's a fake. The bad news is, it's a recreation of something that actually happened. And where else but Australia? A woman claims that, while on vacation down under, she encountered a true behemoth of an arachnid in her hotel. She was just there for a low-key comic book convention. She didn't want to deal with a situation like this. She was utterly horrified and, after going full Karen, got a full refund. Many people think she might have lied just to get that refund, but if she was telling the truth, then based on her account, this is surely one of the biggest and therefore rarest spiders in the world. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag strange topic. Number 19, Chinese Hourglass Spider. Hourglass spiders are a unique variety of trapdoor spiders known for their unusually curved abdomens. They've even earned the nickname Oreo Cookie Spiders, so feel free to munch on some cookies as we teach you about these odd and elusive creatures. Belonging to the genus Cyclocosmia, these spiders are experts at lying in wait for unsuspecting prey to pass by their burrows. Though related to tarantulas, they're smaller and not as bulky. The thing most people notice about these spiders is their amazing abdomens. All species in the Cyclocosmia genus have a similar flat abdomen. But each species has its small differences. These abdomens are like Kevlar body armor. So the main theory is that these unique abdomens evolved as a kind of defense mechanism. The idea is that spiders with more robust abdomens had a survival advantage. They were pretty much better at evading predators that tried to gobble them up. One farmer mistook the spider's incredible hourglass abdomen for an ancient Chinese seal. Plus, some people have noted its resemblance to the Aztec sunstone. Number 18. The Strawberry Spider The strawberry spider is found in various European countries. It doesn't appear to be present in Ireland, but it shows up very rarely almost every other place nearby. In Scotland, for example, the spider was once found in specific locations like Killiecrankie in Perthshire and Coromone near Glen Affric. However, sightings increased in 2002, with the spider being observed near Fort Augustus and Speen Bridge, and later in 2009 in Drugregan. Today, it's most commonly found in areas like Glen Morstan, Glen Gary, and Loch Arkeg in Scotland. But by commonly, we really mean very rarely. But hey, it's good to know that they're out there at all. Belonging to the Aranidae family, the strawberry spider is relatively large, and it's part of a group that constructs orb webs, those classic spiral, wheel-shaped webs that you often see in parks or forests. That's why it's also commonly called the orange wheel-weaving spider. The female strawberry spider tends to establish a stable home for herself and remains there for extended periods. She waits for prey to get entangled in her web or for a male to come along for mating. 
she typically uses a birch leaf, sewing it together with her silk to create a cone-shaped shelter with the pointy end facing upwards. These shelters are usually attached to low plants, specifically purple moorgrass leaves in Scotland. Number 17, Hawaiian Happy Face Spider. The happy face spider has a unique abdomen that can sometimes display color patterns resembling a smiley face. These spiders like to hang out on the underside of leaves where they spin their relatively fragile webs to catch prey. In the Hawaiian Islands, you'll only encounter them on Oahu, Molokai, Maui, and Hawaii. Intriguingly, the patterns on their abdomens differ from island to island, a phenomenon known as polymorphism, or many forms. Happy face spiders from different islands have evolved similar patterns, maintaining a consistent ratio of two yellow to one non-yellow morphs. This is really weird, and scientists had a ball trying to figure it out. Researchers speculated there must be some selective force keeping this balance in place. Could it be that somehow the yellow morph is better at camouflaging? This idea gained traction when researcher Jill Seppi was helping her children search for Lego bricks. She realized she could quickly find a red brick when it was the only color she was looking for, but finding a red brick became more challenging when she had to look for blue, black, or red bricks simultaneously. This led her to think about previous studies involving predator search patterns in blue jays. So if this search image hypothesis holds true for blue jays, it might also apply to Hawaiian honeycreeper, a bird that's known to prey on happy face spiders. The hypothesis suggests that these predators might find it more difficult to spot spiders when there are multiple color patterns to search for, potentially explaining the spider's polymorphism. These spiders use their variety of colors as a defense. No wonder they're so happy. Number 16, Patu Digua Spider. The Patu Digua is a tiny spider discovered in Colombia's Valle del Cuaca region. Male Patu Digua spiders measure about 0.015 inches in length. And if you can't just imagine that on command, it's about a fifth the size of a pinhead, which earns it the title of the world's smallest spider. You might think that's the only interesting thing about it, but no, it may play a part in our future tech. In 2022, this minuscule spider was proposed as a model for necrobotic gripping tools to handle microscopic objects. To put its size into perspective, it could easily be mistaken for a speck of dust. A light yellow strip below its head highlights its shiny black body, while its striking red eyes add to its allure. The Patu Dingua has serious chops at hunting small insects. It can use its keen senses and agility to nab its prey. This teensy tininess is actually a huge advantage as it can sneak into spots where predators could never fit. Number 15, White Crab Spider. Female white crab spiders can grow up to 0.4 inches long, and males up to 0.2. Including the legs, the spider spans about 1.2 inches. Its primary color is white, though it can sometimes appear yellow. The head and legs are almost translucent. The spider, scientifically known as Thomas Suspectabilis, is adept at ambushing its prey, and it's often found hiding in flowers that match the color of its intended meal. It lays its eggs in folded leaves, with each egg sac containing 200 to 370 cream-colored eggs that are about 0.04 inches in diameter. They cleverly use their body's ability to reflect UV light to create a color contrast that lures in bees. Most of these spiders prefer living in suburban or urban areas, particularly in eastern Australia, where they're often found near white and yellow daisies. These spiders are venomous, and they tend to be more aggressive and bite more often compared to other spider species. Their bites generally won't be fatal, but they might cause localized pain. Unlike many spiders, these guys don't spin webs. Instead, they use stealth and ambush techniques to catch their prey. Here's how, and heads up, it's pretty awesome. Their colorful bodies reflect UV light. This makes them attractive to bees who come to check out this little eight-legged flower, and then bam, it's bees for breakfast again for the hungry spider. Number 14, Green Lynx Spider. The Green Lynx Spider is a large, vivid green creature that you'll often find in gardens. This is the largest lynx spider in North America. Named for their quickness and agility, similar to cats, lynx spiders mainly prefer warm climates. This green lynx likes open environments like meadows, prairies, and farmlands, but seems especially fond of the tops of shrubs and flowering plants in gardens. In Florida, the State Agriculture Department reportedly receives more calls about this spider than any other. 
That said, many people living in proximity to the green links either never spot one or get overly anxious if they do. But there's actually no need to worry. This spider isn't harmful to humans. A female green lynx typically produces one or two egg sacs per year, each containing around 200 bright orange eggs. These eggs hatch after approximately two weeks, but the younger spiders stick around in their sac for another 10 to 16 days to molt and gain strength. When it's time, the mother opens the egg sac to help her spiderlings emerge, although they can also manage to get out by themselves if necessary. Once they leave the sac, it can take up to another nine months for the green lynx spiderlings to fully mature. Number 13, Peacock Spider. You're telling me there's a jumping spider out there with a peacock-like tail that enjoys dancing and drumming. How have I missed this? And then the most important question, is it gonna kill me? Relax, it's only about 0.3 inches long, so it's easy to miss. If you're not a fan of spiders, you'll be relieved to know that this tiny mouth it has can't even puncture human skin to deliver its venom. However, the insects and other spiders it hunts, they aren't so lucky. This spider isn't the sit and wait type, it's a go-getter. Think of it as the lion of the spider world, bravely tackling prey triple its size and incapacitating them with venom. But here's the real show. These spiders are more into romance than combat. The males sport peacock-like fans on their rears and engage in dance and drumming routines. This display seems to tickle the fancy of female spiders, activating receptors in their legs. So it turns out they're more lovers than fighters after all. Number 12, Bunny Harvestman Spider. Back in 2017, a photo made the rounds on the internet featuring what appeared to be a dog or rabbit-shaped figure on the back of a spider. The man behind the lens was Andreas K, an animal photographer and biologist. So what was this creature? Turned out to be a type of arachnid that people endearingly dubbed the Bunny Harvestman. From the right angle, a large black hump on its back complemented by greenish-yellow limbs, seems to resemble the head of a rabbit or dog, complete with two spots and spikes. This species isn't exactly new. Carl Rower has been documenting it since 1959, and he's our main source of info on Harvestman genus. Contrary to what you might think, Harvestman and their close relatives, Daddy Longlegs, aren't actually spiders. They're closer to scorpions and camel spiders. Their diet consists mainly of dead plant and animal matter rather than active hunting. Physically, they differ from spiders in a few key ways. Their legs are segmented, and they're generally pretty small. They don't have a segmented torso, and they only sport two small eyes instead of the six or more that you find on spiders. The unique shape of these harvestmen is thought to give them an edge by making them look intimidating to potential predators. Oh, I bet it wouldn't be too happy to find out that we just think it's really, really cute. Number 11, Pelican Spider. The Archaeidae family includes roughly 90 species across five genera, and they're also known as assassin spiders or pelican spiders. Specializing in eating other spiders, they range in size from 0.08 to 0.31 inches. What sets them apart is the variety in their necks, which can be either long and slender or short and chunky. These spiders get their pelican nickname from their elongated jaws and necks, which makes them kind of look like a pelican. And same as pelicans, they use this unusual feature to capture prey. They have relatives that live in South America and New Zealand. The spiders bear a striking resemblance to small pelicans and are particularly common in Madagascar and Australia. Despite their small stature, even when fully grown, they've been around for a while. Fossils of these spiders, preserved in amber, were discovered in Europe back in the 1840s, and they're estimated to be 40 million years old. The first clues about the existence of assassin spiders came from those European amber fossils in the 1840s. But it wasn't until 1881 when a living specimen was discovered in Madagascar. Then it became clear that there were different kinds of assassin spiders out there. Number 10. Blue Tarantula. As you might guess from the name, the Goody Sapphire Tarantula sports a striking sapphire blue hue. Originating from southern India, this sizable tarantula can span more than six inches across. But the most amazing thing is probably the geometric pattern that it has on its back. For fans of metal, its scientific name, Polycetheria metallica, has a certain ring to it. You could easily imagine this intimidating creature featured in an Edgar Allan Poe tale or a Metallica music video, but there's some bad news. 
Its habitat has been decimated to just a few square miles, and it looks like it's on the way to extinction. It's been listed as critically endangered. The Goody Sapphire Tarantula spins funnel-shaped webs to catch insects, and it's venomous. While there haven't been any recorded fatalities from its bite, the venom can cause significant pain. It also has many fans, and people often want one as a pet, but the top priority is trying to ensure its survival in the wild. Number 9. Horrid Ground Weaver Spider You'll only found the Horrid Ground Weaver in two specific spots on the globe, both old limestone quarries in Plymouth, UK. Over the past 30 years, construction has taken over a third of the spider's only known habitats. In 2015, plans were in place to build a housing estate on another third, but advocacy from Bug Life and Plymouth Council put a stop to it. In the words of the 10,000 people who signed a petition to save the spider, it might not be a tiger, but it's just as important. First discovered in 1995, but not officially documented till 1999, the species has been found only nine times. Of these, seven were females and two were males. The first photograph of the spider came in 2016 from a new location. The BBC Radio 4 show, Saving Species, spotlighted the horrid ground weaver in September of 2011. Bug Life also initiated an online petition in 2015, gaining almost 10,000 signatures and raising over 10,000 pounds to further research. Finally, a planning inspector rejected the housing estate plans to protect this rare species. Hooray! Oh, sorry, it was in England. Hooray, govna! Number 8. Hercules Baboon the name Hercules Baboon actually comes from how much its legs resemble a baboon's fingers. A single example of this spider has long been known to reside in London's National History Museum, but in the wild, it's pretty much non-existent. There was talk that the Hercules Baboon spider could be even larger than the Goliath bird-eating spider, but research from the National History Museum clarified it's only about a third of the size. That's still pretty massive, though. While some pet stores claim to offer this spider for sale, use their front legs. Um, they've got. Uh... That's probably false, given how rare the critter is. The spiders being marketed could be king baboons, a species pretty similar to Hercules baboons. In any case, these spiders can become easily agitated and are not recommended for first time pet owners. Though Hercules baboon spiders are venomous, their venom is generally not considered harmful to humans. They can bite, especially if they feel cornered or threatened, and while some will find it painful, it's usually not a major concern. Due to its rarity, having not been observed in the wild for over a century, it's unclear how or even if it spins webs. Similarly, little is known about its other characteristics, like what their eggs or spiderlings look like. Number 7. Scorpion-Tailed Spider This intriguing bug is commonly known as the Scorpion-Tailed Spider, but that's not its only name. It's also referred to as the Scorpion Orb Weaver and the Tailed Spider. For the scientifically inclined, it's called Arachnua Higgisi. Anyway, whatever you want to call it, it's a pretty amazing spider. First described by Ludwig Karl Christian Koch, a respected German entomologist, back in 1872, this spider has been classified as its own unique species. Good news is, its population appears to be stable across its range, so it's not listed by the IUCN. Surely, the most interesting part of this spider is its unusual tail. Each time the spider molts, this part grows a little bit more. It eventually turns into this scorpion tail. Both male and female spiders have distinct sizes and unique appendages, but their coloration is fairly consistent. The color varies among adults, but generally ranges from beige to different shades of brown and black. Number 6. Ladybird Spider The ladybird spider is a distinctive type of velvet spider, mainly found in Central and Northern Europe. Its name comes from the fact that the males look quite similar to ladybugs. Okay. This spider belongs to the Velvet Spiders group. Their transformation takes place after several molts, and the final one turns it into a rather eye-catching form. The male has a red abdomen with pairs of black spots and black legs. Oh, got it. It's a Pokemon. The whole idea is to give him a little protection from predators. You see, he roams during the day seeking a mate, which is super dangerous. The Ladybird spider primarily lives in a vertical, silk-lined burrow in the ground. 
This also features a silk canopy on top, kind of like a spider luxury condo. Sadly, the ladybird spider faces the risk of extinction. This is, of course, because humans are wrecking the place as usual. Number five, longhorned orb weaver spider. The longhorned orb weaver is the common name for this intriguing spider, which is pretty fitting. Scientists also refer to it as the curved spiny spider. The Danish zoologist Johan Christian Fabricius was the first to officially classify this spider as a distinct species in 1793. For now, the longhorned orb weaver maintains a stable and sizable population across its habitat, so it's not on the IUCN's red list. This is good news, but it still has to deal with plenty of challenges due to destruction of its habitat. In the US, the only native species of the Gastrocantha genus is the spiny blacked orb weaver. This spider goes by many names, including crab spider, spiny orb weaver spider, crab-like orb weaver, jewel spider, and even the smiley face spider. These amazing looking spidey guys love life in the rainforest, so if you're ever out trekking, you could run into one. Keep your eyes peeled if you're in these warm, lush areas. You'll consider yourself lucky to spot one of these eight-legged wonders. Number four, Moroccan Flick Flack Spider. The Flick Flack Spider calls the Erg Chebi, a sandy desert in Morocco, its home. It's usually known to scientists as Senebras Rencha Bergi. It's a kind of huntsman spider with a weird mode of travel. Unlike the tumbleweed-like golden rolling spider, which can only roll downhill, the Flick Flack can perform jumps that look like cartwheels, both uphill and on flat ground. This quirky method of movement, called flick flack jumps, allows it to evade predators at a swift two meters per second. The flick flack spider's got a real knack for building its own little sandcastles under the ground. It's like their personal fortress against harsh desert heat and hungry predators. Interestingly, there's a similar spider species found in Tunisia, called Cerebus velosus. But you can tell them apart by their unique and, of course, our friend flick flack's signature cartwheel and move. This crazy way of moving was a revelation to bionics experts who ended up building a robot named Tabit, named after the Berber word for spider, Tabacha. This bot replicates our spidey friend with its ability to walk normally or do somersaults on flat surfaces. Robots with such mobility could tackle tough terrains effortlessly, even deep ocean floors or even Mars surface. Number three, the bed dong spoiler. Daytime predators like birds and wasps often mistake some spiders for bird droppings, which allows the spiders to avoid getting eaten. One well-known example is the bird dropping spider, also known as Solania excavida. The spider also goes by the names Death's Head Spider and Orchard Spider. Its markings can resemble a skull, and it commonly resides on fruit trees where it feeds mainly on moths. This cool critter calls Australia home especially the eastern and southern parts, but some folks have even spotted them around Uluru. They pop up in suburban gardens too, but most people just pass by without noticing. Much like the bolus spider cousin of theirs, these guys use mimicry to catch their food, usually male moths. They hang off leaves or twigs at night, using silk threads as bait for those unsuspecting moths. The scent from this setup lures male moths, who then get nabbed by our crafty spider friends using their strong front legs. And hey, if another type of moth happens to fly past, why not add the variety to the menu? But during daylight hours, they just sort of lay low, either resting on leaves or branches. Their secret is simple. Act still and look exactly like bird poop so the predators won't mess with them. Don't worry too much about bites from these guys, because although getting bitten isn't pleasant, it's usually not dangerous. It might hurt a bit and it'll probably swell up, but slapping a cold pack on there should help you out. Number two, eight spotted crab spider. The eight spotted crab spider, known scientifically as Platythomius cloctomachitus, is hard to miss with its bright yellow abdomen and distinct black spots. This one inch long spider was first discovered in a forest preserve in Singapore back in 1924, making it one of the largest crab spiders around. So how did crab spiders get their name? Well, because they can move sideways like a crab, but in fact, they can go in all directions. They're super versatile. These spiders don't spin webs. In fact, they are super economical. They just need a single strand of silk. Female spiders either place their eggs in a silk-made sack or create a nest within a plant. 
After that, the mother usually dies. Oh god, it's Bambi all over again. Oh, maybe I spoke too soon. Uh, they only d after they eat the father post-mating, so that's some pretty hardcore parenting, I guess if you ask me about it. Did Bambi's mommy eat the dad? No? Oh, thank god. There are crab spiders in all kinds of places. What about the bark crab spider? This one lives in North America, Asia, oh, and Europe too. The colors on its back and legs make it blend seamlessly with all kinds of tree bark, and when prey comes too close, whammo, it leaps into action. Identifying a crab spider is more or less simple enough. Their front legs are visibly longer and thicker than their back legs, so this is the main method. They have eight eyes that are super creepy, and these can be perched on the small raised areas called tubercles. With a pair of claws on each foot and their crab-like leg position, they can really move. As we've seen here, there's tons of patterns and colors that you can find on crab spiders. But I'd have to say none are more spectacular than this little yellow guy. Number 1. Arrow-shaped Micrathena Arrow-shaped Micrathena spiders are aptly named for their unique body shape. Unlike the typical rounded spider, this one has a more triangular abdomen, resembling an arrowhead. Female spiders in this species have sharp spines sticking out from their abdomen, somewhat like rose prickles. From the underside of the abdomen, two large points jut out at a right angle, featuring red bases and black tips. Males, in contrast, have smooth belly edges and lack spines. <laughs> so they're like humans. Males are mostly black with white outlines, but females sport a variety of colors and patterns. They primarily display red on the head, legs, and body, with a bright yellow arrow-shaped abdomen dotted with small red spots. Many of the medium and large spines have black tips. Females are generally twice the size of males. Both sexes spin orb-shaped webs that are vertically oriented, often close to the ground. These webs feature a thick, short, zigzagging strand just above the middle, known as a stable amentum, which helps the spider move around its web easily. Orb weavers like these, they often rebuild their webs daily. In the fall, a female arrow-shaped Micrathena spider will lay fertilized eggs on a nearby leaf. She dies before the eggs have a chance to hatch, leaving them to overwinter in the egg sac and emerge in the spring. These spiders prefer outdoor settings rich in vegetation, offering ample hiding spots, and they're commonly found in forests. So, are you an arachnophobe or a spider lover? You made it to the end, so I guess I have a guess. What's the biggest spider that you've ever seen? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.